Joining us now is Philippe Jeté. He's the president and CEO of Kojiko and Kojiko Communications. Uh, welcome and thank you very much for your time today. And um, love to first start the conversation with how you characterize the quarter. Well, uh, first, uh, thank you for having me. And uh, we're very proud, actually, of our results in the context of a pandemic. Uh, fantastic results when we compare year over year. Revenues are up, EBITDA is up, strong uh, internet performance, uh, as well as the introduction of our IPTV service in Canada called Epico. You'll hear more about it. Uh, and on the U.S. side, strong in, uh, inter internet growth as well. Uh, Florida, our investment in inf infrastructure there is paying off. We have uh, condo towers and gated communities uh, filling up, so subscriptions are up in Florida. And even on the media side, we were uh, we show up really strong results uh, given the context of the pandemic, and still uh, with very good market shares and still the number one radio station with 98.5 in. Uh, uh, in Canada with 5.3 million listeners a week. Hmm. So, and, and um, the analyst who covers your company over at TV would agree uh, with your characterization, um, saying that the results were better than expected as well. I'm curious if you could give us a little bit more indication in terms of the very strong internet sub ads growth. What, what's, what's driving that? Well, uh, demand, of course, uh, is driving it. Uh, remember, we are a regional uh, operator in Canada as well as in the United States. That is what makes Kojiko and Atlantic Broadband unique. So we have assets on both sides. We share some common services. We have high synergies between the two organizations. And you can see it in our um, um, uh, EBITDA margins. So uh, year over year from 47.2 to 48.7 this year. So high synergies, good operation, very efficient uh, capital and uh, OPEX management uh, on, on the back of a strong demand on internet. Our competitions uh, competitors are offering uh, inferior product with DSL or satellite. We come up very strong with almost everywhere 120 megabit per second up to one gigabit per second. So very, very good platform, high speed, re reliable. And we have good uh, a TV service on this to, to complement it and telephony services. So uh, the trio is really strong and uh, uh, we're very proud of uh, being able to deliver those services and keep them up in the pandemic. I'm curious as well, with respect to your guidance, um, I think it's in line with expectations, but perhaps just given some of the strength that you're talking about, I think some might have wanted to see it a little bit higher. Of course, we're in a pandemic, so maybe not. Um, what was the most recent trend uh, that you can talk to us about regarding U.S. Uh, broadband volume and also the ARPUs? Okay, well, uh, trends are up um, constantly. We, uh, we take care of growing our business quarter after quarter, year over year, in a very steady and predictable. But um, we, we certainly see a stronger growth in percentage for the first two quarter of uh, the coming year because we're comparing to last year's number for where the first quarters and the second quarter were softer than the third and the fourth. So that's why the growth seems to, uh, to, to, to be a little bit less aggressive for our next Q3 and Q4, but remember that we were comparing to very strong growths in uh, Q3 and Q4 of this year. Philippe, can you give us a little bit uh, more detail in terms of the trends you're seeing from work from home? Talk to us about the demand factor. Well, uh, we see certainly, uh, uh, and again, we are a regional operator, so we see a lot of demand for um, certainly a lot of uh, primary and secondary houses in our footprint, where everybody now needs more than one connection uh, or average connection. Everyone is working uh, from different places. We use business services. We use a lot of uh, uh, consumer uh, entertainment services like films and, 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 and uh, video on demand. So very, very strong demand. And our competitors are actually either offering low-speed DSL service. So that's why cable providers with our very, super uh, strong 
uh, fiber-based network, uh, we see a demand. But also, uh, some people were on mobile networks, and they realized that at home, there's nothing to beat a wired broadband connection. So mobile services are good on the road, but you can't expect uh, to use them for very, very large usage uh, every month. It's, uh, it costs a fortune, and it's not as efficient as uh, broadband wired networks. And obviously with those results, those strong results, those strong margins, a, a great product as you describe, there's obviously interest in your company from Altice as well as Rogers. Um, how do you operate with a hostile bid that you also have to consider and think about on a daily basis? Well, first of our, uh, we, we uh, Kojiko Inc. and Kojiko Communication uh, boards of directors have been very, very clear, very transparent. Um, our, our answers were out there um, rapidly. So there is certainly the intent to continue uh, as an independent company to, to, to grow uh, and deliver on our strategic plan. If you just go before this hostile takeover uh, or proposal, uh, whatever, um, from Rogers and, and, and Altis, um, so before September 1st and uh, you go back five years, we had an increase of 38% in our revenue, 40% in our EBITDA. That's an 11.3% growth over five years. That uh, is certainly higher than the 7.4 uh, TSX results. So strong performance. These were our results. We continue to forge ahead. We uh, have a lot of potential in Canada, in the U.S., very proud of the results we're, uh, we're delivering this quarter and for the past year. And we look at um, fiscal 21 with, uh, with great potential again. So on, on the back of organic growth, so we see now organic growth in Canada and the U.S., as well as successful uh, acquisitions. Uh, in the last eight years, we have completed for four Canadian billion dollars, um, five acquisitions in the U.S., as we know. Just in the last six months, we've announced two in um, in Canada, and and one in the the U.S. that was closed. So um, we we deliver a, a great efficiency uh, through our operating synergies, um, the uh, uh, penetration rate or take rate of our services for internet in the U.S. For example, has moved up from 33% um, before the acquisition to 52% now. So we right. uh, we are highly efficient operators. And um, to your point, you are growing. You're growing through acquisition. Um, curious, your most recent acquisition in the midst of a hostile uh, offer from. Altis Rogers, you made an acquisition that I think surprised a lot of people. How long was that in the works for? Well, it takes uh, a long time to uh, to, to to complete uh, acquisition, a very long time. It's months and months and months of effort. But here, what we have to know is Diri Telecom and Kojiko were friends, uh, friendly companies for decades. We've been working together. They were uh, developing their business and networks in parts of the province of Quebec. We were active in other parts of the province of Quebec. And now we've agreed to... Uh, to this acquisition that should close before this calendar year, and we will regroup our force and create even more synergies. We have um, other products that we will be able to add to uh, their portfolio, and uh, they already cover 200 cities and towns that we will add to the 400 that uh, Kojiko already serve, 427 in Quebec and Ontario, so we're growing. Is there an offer from Altis and Rogers that could be presented that could, in fact, win the board and family support? Well, I can't speak on behalf, behalf of uh, Gestion with them. So uh, the, the, that part of the question is really for them. As to the uh, boards of Kojiko Inc. and Kojiko Communication, we have analyzed and rapidly concluded that our strategic potential and, and growth plans um, are very strong, and that's what we shall pursue. 